the wind and rain have died down and the sea is calm again. We don't often get those storms, but when we do, they can whip up the channel with some ferocity. You can see along the shoreline all sorts of debris, tree branches, scaffolding planks and the odd fisherman's float. Anything useful or decorative gets scooped up pretty quickly and soon there is nothing to portray the weather we had. Well, let's go in and have a cup of tea. <laughs> Hello, I'm Peter John Cooper. Today's tale from the cliff edge tells of some of the more human debris that gets washed up here. It's called The Murderer Who Swam. He was an amiable sort of chap, you know, the sort who would be happy to give you the time of day as he sat out on one of the Westcliff benches, toweling his lank grey hair after swimming, and then go on to tell you his life story in odd fragmented detail as he pulled his t-shirt over his head. He had an easy charm and an accent that betrayed something, an education at least an upbringing somewhat out of the run of the mill. Of course, he was really like all the rest of us, a piece of flotsam or jetsam washed up here on the tide's edge because there was nowhere else to go. And like the rest of us, once you had found yourself here, all sorts of bits and pieces and details of your life would drop away because they no longer had any relevance to what you were now. Even things like names became hazy and forgotten. You became what other people called you, and you might get called different names by different people. Your identity became turbid and unimportant. It used to be said that retired people came to Bournemouth to die and then forget what they came here for. The truth is, people get washed here for all sorts of reasons, but then forget who they are. And whether you're a wealthy retiree living in a nice apartment with picture windows over the green, or someone down on their luck and sleeping in the bushes with only a few cans of cheap cider and a collection of dog ends to keep you company, you are basically all here for the same reason and with the same history. You were something somewhere at one time, but now you are here. If I'd asked him anything about who he was, I'm pretty sure he would have just answered, I swim, old boy. That's what I do. That's who I am. I'm always intrigued by those who still cling to fragments of memory, little pieces of parchment with odd sentences that may or may not be clues to a previous existence as a high court judge or a member of the SAS or someone who has devoted their life to caring for a difficult, ailing mother. And for someone like me, it's fun putting those little clues together and trying to deduce a character that I can write about. People here called him Rich. 
I mean, rich as in a name, you know, whether he was rich in the other sense, I couldn't tell. There was a large black BMW that would turn up from time to time outside his apartment block, and I'd see him climb in and get whisked away for a few hours, but that meant little. All that implied was that he knew someone who owned a BMW and who may or may not be treating him to lunch. On these occasions his clothes were smart but old-fashioned and had clearly seen better days. The rest of the time, like everybody else here, he wore tracksuit bottoms and running shoes. My running days are over, he would say expansively, as if implying he might once have been known for his running. An athlete, perhaps, or just dodging an ex-wife seeking alimony payments. And although I did hear some of the clifftop dwellers calling him rich, I never saw him as that. From his demeanour and mode of dress, I would have put him down as a plain, unadorned Richard. But the one thing I've learnt here is that you are what other people call you. So rich he was. I saw him most days from the cliff top, swimming out in the bay just beyond the breakers, a small lonely figure crawling backwards and forwards for hours on end, it seemed, between the groins. I wondered if he'd been an actual athlete, one of those public school types from Chariots of Fire who had had his ambition to be an Olympian thwarted through some connivance of another runner or by some personal failing. Ambition? <laughs> That's a funny word. What would I do with ambition, old boy? Not for the likes of us. Not here. Not now. And not then either. I bet my fortune against the future and the only winner there is the bookie. I'm not sure why I gambled. I mean, what was I ever short of? People called me lucky. They were being ironic, but I was too stupid to realise. But is there ambition in that? No. Then I just wanted to run fast enough to be ahead of the game, as if that's an end in itself. If I'd ever won, I, I don't know. And now I've become an entirely different man from the one who lost a fortune, and a family, and a name. Well, you have friends, I said, mentioning the black BMW. He pursed his lips. Yes, I have friends. Perhaps it would be better if I hadn't. They hid me, went on hiding me, when it would have been better if I had faced up to things. But they must think highly of you. No. Nah. These are people for whom friendship is a duty, an obligation, learnt at school, drummed in on the rugger field, welded into place in the guards. It is a shield behind which we shelter together, and it never does to let the guard down. A lifetime unwritten contract. There can be no cracks, because... Once one brick crumbles, the whole bloody edifice comes crashing down. All for one and one for all, old boy. I have friends. But what are they really? Prison warders, old boy. Prison warders, making sure that I can never escape. Can never let the side down. <laughs> I've done my time several times over. But there is no redemption when you have friends. He paused, reflecting for a moment, deciding what he was prepared to say. Do you believe in redemption, old sport? Human redemption, not the religious sort, of course. Although, I suppose that is just another way of looking at the same thing. No, they weren't going to let me have any of their precious redemption. Well, 
not in this life, not until my neck was well and truly stretched. Metaphorically speaking, old thing, metaphorically speaking, for forty years I ran on the treadmill. You wouldn't believe the effort it takes to burn through a fortune. And now, for forty years since, I have swum. Tell me, isn't that enough? Does one half of your life cancel out the other? For forty years the truth was hidden from me. I was hidden behind titles, wealth. I lived a charmed life. I thought I could have anything I wanted. Everything. That I could even see into the future. A cripple of the most awful bloody sort. Emotional, intellectual, moral. It came to a climax. I killed in rage and panic, and what is more reprehensible, in ignorance. In that moment I lost everything, self-respect, self-worth, my family, my life. I took to swimming, that was a little joke on my part, no longer running, but swimming, the sea, out there is the only place where I can be free of it all. The sea holding me up. I committed myself to the support of the sea. They still call me lucky. I, I can see the look in their eyes when we meet. I, I think they like to see me as an exhibit in a zoo. Uh, let's throw a banana to the luckiest man in the world. They like to see me occasionally to remind them what might have happened to them if things had been different. I am a dirty secret they can laugh about in their club when they are together. I am an act of charity that assuages their dirty consciences. They have devoted themselves to keeping me here alive for the sake of friendship. But I am a weight around their necks as much as they are a weight around mine. We owe each other that terrible debt of friendship. And my payment of that is to keep swimming. Gave me time to think, to be, to be someone else, to be the swimmer. It's the only place where they can't get me. If they did, they would hold me down as I swim, so that I can never come to the surface to breathe. I just have to swim far enough out so they can't get me, and I have to keep swimming. You talked about ambition. I suppose I do have an ambition to swim, to keep swimming, to go on swimming. I never put into words the obvious question that sprang into my mind. I should have asked when I had the chance, but I never got round to it. I still see him out there, swimming backwards and forwards, hour after hour. I've not spoken to him since. Uh, I guess he's too busy being driven by whatever it is that drives people who seek redemption. listening to that tale from the cliff edge <laughs> thanks to you and my other listeners i feel inspired to do better every time i upload one of these i've got some really exciting stories coming up but i do need a bit of inspiration to keep me going you can 
help me in that, if you would, by helping me to get some more listeners. Perhaps you could mention it to some friends or copy it to a group that you follow. Anyway, I'll see you next time.